<laughs> so I'm, la I'm laughing the moment that we're coming on air. Welcome to the Week 9 Underworld Stack Fest brought to you by Player Profiler and, of course, Rotogrinders.com. For anybody, a little, little how the sausage gets made, Dario gets the, is the one who picks our games that we are going to talk about every single week. And he there's a private chat right going on behind the scenes, and we get down to the last game. And this slate is so gross in terms of game stacking that it's just a bunch of questions. You know, it's like, uh, this game? Should we talk about this one? And so it's kind of an intro into this slate where it does feel, we were talking a little bit before we went live, I don't feel like anything is super straightforward, kind of like we have had for a lot of this year in terms of, this game is, you know, the top priority. This game is clearly the game stack. So I think this show will be very good, maybe selfishly for me, to start to hone in on kind of some of the games that we like best. Really quickly, before I pass it off to these guys, another quick recap of last week. Um, maybe third time will be the charm that, that, that will absolutely hit the stone cold nuts, but it's hard to beat, honestly, the last couple of weeks that we've had here on the show. Jacob filled in for Dario last week, and we had another, honestly, an awesome 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 week um sorry sorry dario we yeah. did it without you we weren't sure if you're we were gonna, gonna bring you dude, back listen or what? man listen we could have used you okay it wasn't we, we we didn't we didn't have it totally taken care of without you but we did pretty good <laughs> <laughs> you helped us of course um not that uh not that anybody you know wasn't talking about the the dolphin stacks but lots of things we got into with um kind of all the games honestly <laughs> that that went crazy all the running back spots um it was it, we really got into a lot of different a lot of different things and, and hit on a very 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 high percentage of them. So I'm really excited to kind of keep keep what we got going. Matt, kick us off before we start to dive into like the first game. How, w this this slate is strange, right? No hurts, no you know. There's Josh Allen, but like that's it, and it's the Jets, and that game doesn't even really feel all that fun. It's so so. We'll talk about it for sure. But how are you feeling about this slate? It feels awkward to me at first, kind of. Yeah, it is. It's a weird one. And Dario, by the way, we got people off Daniel Jones stacks. We said no to Daniel Jones yes. stacks. That was huge. That was a big one. So sometimes it's the stacks you don't play. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So yeah, so I'm because I because he and I talked about it before the show. I was like, "What about you know, the Giants?" He's like, "Ah." Da, 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 da. <laughs> so you know, my my take is here. You know, I'm gravitating toward the Chargers here because hey, if not now, when? Right? You're not gonna you're gonna play, you're not gonna play Herbert this week against the the Falcons, right? It was like last week with DJ Moore. It's like why even have him if you're not gonna play him? Like why? Yeah. Even, why even? You're never gonna mm -hmm. play him. Ever. You'll never play him if you don't play him this week. You'll never play. You'll never play Herbert. He's a reasonable price. No one ha is like, is in like a a super smash spot other than Geno Smith, who is you know doesn't have the same level of upside. The the weird thing is though when you compare Geno versus Herbert, I think that's a kind of interesting dichotomy. One guy has like weapons, right? Lockett, Metcalf. The other guy has Josh Palmer, who is the quintessential <laughs> average receiver. He is literally at the average across every metric almost. He is like ranked 47th out of 95 receivers. That's yeah, what well, he is. And his, well, his measurables, everything average. But it's interesting in that you, you could you can salary save too with DeAndre mm -hmm. Carter. So it's just it's an interesting thing. The like does wide receiver quality matter for quarterbacks like that is a big test for Justin Herbert if he if he gets there this week with these guys with this cast of characters then you know he's he's going to be a long way toward you know getting all the way back to where we had him before the season and and to to piggyback on that Dario the interesting thing is this spot like Matt said, if it's not gonna ha if it doesn't happen this week for Justin Herbert, I mean, we may just never talk about a Chargers game on the, on this show again. Even though their defense is, you know, a sieve and Austin Eckler is great, the PG they made this 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 Falcons defense without AJ Terrell made PJ Walker look <laughs> like an NFL MVP, not just an XFL MVP. This this guy couldn't complete a forward pass last year. If everybody remembers, I know PJ Walker looks good. Maybe he's just taken a step or something last year. It was like PJ Walker and Cam Newton bouncing back and forth at quarterback for Carolina after Darnold got hurt. And it, neither one of them could do absolutely anything. And DJ Moore was there. CMC was there, right? There was guys, guys were there. Robbie Anderson was there. And now 
I don't know if PJ Walker has taken that step, but he certainly looked at last week and it was in this spot. If Justin Herbert can't do it against these Falcons, I, I don't know. What, what's your kind of take on that that wide receiver versus quarterback versus defense matchup thing? Right. I think, I mean, first of all, we can pencil in Austin Eckler for like 15 targets. <laughs> so make sure you're playing him regardless of what we end up saying about the rest of this game. And I think Gerald Everett also gets a pretty nice bump in the absence of both Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. I mean, I don't know if Keenan Allen's been officially ruled out yet, but he hasn't oh, practiced this on. week. Did, he, he talked didn't about, practice today yeah, either. They, uh, forget it. Um, <laughs> forget what are his it. hamstrings you know, made of? What are his I, hamstrings made we, of? We, we talked about it. He got caught in farm equipment. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> So carry but, on. Sorry. Yeah. I think my biggest concern with this game is the chargers have one of, if not the league's worst run defense and the Falcons, if there's anything that mm. Arthur Smith loves, it's running the ball <laughs> unnecessarily. And I think this is a game where he'd be justified to have a run heavy game plan. They could be getting Cordero Patterson back. I think the reports today is that this is strange to me that the injured reserve transactions a lot of times happen on Saturdays where they'll activate a guy even though he's technically on injured reserve today, he practiced all week. Um, and I think that there's a good chance Cordero Patterson does return tomorrow. So Ooh. I think that there's just so mm. much concern for me that <laughs> the Falcons just, you know, completely slow this game down and make it uninteresting for all the weapons outside of Eckler on the Chargers side of things. So question on, on, on CPAT. Um, because kind of the things you were saying was leading me to, okay, if CPAT doesn't get activated, do we go back to our, our lovely two weeks ago winner, and I guess probably somewhat this week winner of the Eckler, right? For everything that's been said about this game, the one thing that no one, no, no one, none of us are like shaking our heads about or whatever is Austin Eckler, right? Because oh, yeah. if the Walk Chargers that. are going to move the ball, it, <laughs> he's the, he's the constant in both the past game and the run game. They don't have this choice of those first couple of weeks from the season where we had, you know, ah, okay, we're going to give Josh Kelly some work. We're going to give, they don't have that choice anymore. It's, it's wheels up, try to win some games and Austin Eckler is their way to do that. And then on the other side, if the chargers run defense is against the Falcons and Arthur Smith just wants to run 90% of the time. Does that mean Algier? If CPAT is out and does that mean like, do we dive into the CPAT? <laughs> Is that yeah, a, I think is that, that a sign for CPAT? Is that a sign for CPAT? <laughs> it's just hard. I think that you can, especially if CPAT doesn't get activated, I think that like playing, you know, one of the punt running backs from the Falcons, CPAT or, or not, sorry, Algier or Huntley, you can plug one of them in with Eckler, kind of makes you able to afford Eckler and still have a decent rest of your lineup. So I think that that's, that's an interesting way to look at it because, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I don't feel comfortable playing much of London or Pitts this week, right? Like You can't play the receiving weapons on the Falcons, even though Pitts had one of his best games of the season last week. It just feels like a, such a difficult dice roll. Even then, one of his best games, it was in a shootout where the other team was scoring a ton of points, and... He still didn't like, I look, I love Kyle Pitts. I got to, that was a fun celebration for a week. I enjoyed it on Twitter being happy for Kyle Pitts and my best ball teams. But even then that was the ceiling. Like, mm -hmm. like, are we really going to pay 4,500 for praying for five for 80 and a touchdown? Told you, like, man. There's, there's all these cheap guys, right? And we're going to go through probably some of them again in some of these games. And there's Everett on the other side of this game, who's a lock for more volume probably than, than Pitts. It's just, I, I love him. I will enjoy his good games, but I just still don't think I can play him in DFS. What do you think, Matt? Yeah, this is, this is, a, this is a weird one, man. This is a weird one. I mean, Caleb Huntley, 4.9K. Uh, two out of the last three weeks, 16 carries. <laughs> right? The and bowling he's, ball. You know, he, he technically more carries than Algier. Is is he taking over that backfield? He's, he's certainly less expensive than Algier. So I think that Huntley would be the, the, the nice little dart throw uh, at running back. And then you could play, yeah, Huntley – with Eckler and Everett Huntley with 
Eckler and DeAndre Carter. I, I find it interesting. De- the the uh, Roto Grinders rostered percentage has DeAndre Carter on DraftKings at one point eight percent and two point two percent on FanDuel, both outside the top thirty five wide receivers. I was like, isn't this what you're looking for? This guy has yeah. athleticism to burn. He's still 29. He's not quite 30. So he's you know, he's got a great matchup. Isaiah Oliver, they give up a ton of fantasy points to to wide receivers. It's the law of the conservation of targets. It's everything you're looking for. Like I mean, I wish most weeks we, if we had, you know, a 4.3k wide receiver who's in this kind of spot with this kind of athletic profile, I mean, Usually we're, we're, we're squinting to try to find him. We think we found him. Oh, maybe maybe Marquise Goodwin. Oh, DK Metcalf's active. Forget it. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's, we, yep. there's a much lower probability that Keenan Allen's active. So he's interesting. So, yeah, I think that answers the question. The, the, I think the question that I asked at the beginning, which is, you know, in what world w- would you be playing more Geno Smith than Justin Herbert? Well, I think this is the world. <laughs> I think this is the exact world where it's like, you know what, based on how, the play calling tendencies of the opposing team and the lack of, of uh, sort of exciting weapons that can, that can really deliver big ceiling performances for Herbert. Yeah. Okay. That, 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 that'll get me off it. Yeah. It's, it's really tricky. I I do think this game is almost the, the game that you have to figure out first. And by that, it could mean like Matt said, it somehow turns into a slog, right? Uh, Herbert is not able to be super successful without high high quality weapons, and Arthur Smith just bleeds the clock all game. That could be between three running backs, right? He gives it to three. That could absolutely be useless for fantasy. But there's so much opportunity at good prices on everybody besides Eckler, I guess. So that you do still, I, I think, if you're building, you know, we talk a lot about on this show building a portfolio. I want to have kind of all the three outs to this game the one we talked about at the very beginning like look Eckler's the man let's focus in on on some Eckler then let's also stack the game a little bit and and whether that's with yeah Algier Huntley CPAT whatever let's stack the let's use some of this Chargers value right because we're going to get to some other games that do have some expensive players there's a lot of good running backs we might want to get to etc yeah for premium then, skinny stacks in other games yes. you can afford it by mm-hmm. going Herbert with these inexpensive options Right. You want, even without getting to Josh Allen, do you want Diggs? Do you want Justin Jefferson? Do you want Cooper Cup? Do you want, you know, et cetera, on down the list? There's a lot of guys we like, Tyreek, right? There's a lot of the guys that we like, and this is a game that helps us get them. But yeah, there are back, a lot back of back door into some of these elite playmakers without stacking them necessarily with their quarterback because you've got Herbert, DeAndre Carter. <laughs> <laughs> DeAndre Carter is the Marquise Goodwin of this week, though. If yeah, we're being totally. totally honest. Yeah, he's. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm sure that the 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 ownership is going to skew to Josh Palmer. I'm sure of it. Mm-hmm. But I'm just not sure that Palmer's much better. And it, you're going to have some salary savings with Carter. So that's. It's not like those are the those are the two starters. That's it, right? Is there right. someone I'm missing? The, the out of Mike, nowhere name is Bandy. Michael Bandy. <clears throat> That's the practice squad receiver who right. he's been active for a few games. Okay. He's, he's a preseason a ten, superstar. 10 targets on the season. Week seven, DeAndre Carter ran 50 routes. Yeah, he played like 98% of the snaps. I think so that's basically worth mentioning with 71 yes. air yards. I think that I think he could have a huge game. It's very I think possible. So too. He has he goes over hundred yards and gets two touchdowns. Like uh Five catches, one of two and two. I mean, at that salary, you know, even five eighty with one touchdown, you're you're winning. Oh, it's massive. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, that's why I want. And then some skinny stacking where you can do Eckler and Carter. Um, oh, it's just there's just no one on the run. Oh my god! I guess you're just gonna be get. You're gonna. I think using Carter quite a bit to make some lineups work. So you're, you're going to get plenty of exposure to Carter this week. And, and, and I think that's a good thing to uh, kind of start to put a bow on this one is you, I think you can just pl- use some of these guys as one-offs, you know, yeah, we don't it. talk about that a, a lot here, but there's so much potential value really on both sides, obviously much more so on the charger side, but potentially at the running back position with it, with Atlanta that 
it, you got a, a team, you know, you, you want to stack one of these other games we're about to talk about, and you got 4,300 left at that last wide receiver spot, you can play DeAndre, right? You can play DeAndre Carter. You don't have to have a Falcon. You don't have to have him with Justin Herbert. It, it's going to it's gonna be okay. But I think, Dude, again, no this Kelsey, game is... No Goddard, no Andrews. Yeah. You're going to have to play some Everett. Yeah, yes, good mm-hmm. good call. I mean, yes. a lot of Everett, too. One-off Everett's, one-off Carter's, definitely one-off Eckler's. It's interesting. If, if Austin Eckler were a wide receiver... That now everyone is is so focused on just loading up on wide receiver and not using your flex for running backs ever, right? There was a, what was it five years ago that you people it was it was a common thing mm-hmm. to put running backs and flex in tournaments. I still love to do it because, uh, like you said, it's more it's less frequent now. It's, it yeah, used it's to, way it, less frequent, yeah. so no one does it. And you know this sort of a throwback where I look up and. Eckler doesn't even have a top five ownership. It's like, oh, interesting. That's because it's the running back position. It's like the it's the position you pay down for now. And that's a really good point. Um, that was what I was going to mention. I'm glad you brought that up. With when I was like, oh, what about the Eckler Algier type thing? Because you think about it, you can really remove those names. But these are the types of players in good spots with good projections. This would be assuming CPAT was out, but specifically Eckler, right? The best running back on the slate, the best fantasy, him and CMC now are the best fantasy running backs in in the game, and no one's playing him. We're going to get to some of it, right? But because you've got Ramondre now, ETN emerging, um, Chuba Hubbard is out, so you have Foreman again, and he just went off. You know, you have Deion Jackson now with Jonathan Taylor out. You have all these guys more in this $6,000 range that everybody then can do what Matt says. Well, how do you get Tyreek Hill? Well, you don't play Austin Eckler. You play Deion Jackson, exactly. right? Yeah, and Deion so- Jackson. And so then play DeAndre Carter and Austin Eckler or, you know, doing those little things. You just create a 2v2 that's like crazy high leverage. Um, Two weeks ago was my best slate of the year uh, before last week. And it was jamming Austin Eckler last week, jamming Christian McCaffrey. It's like everybody's playing Tyreek Hill. I can play Austin Eckler at no ownership. And all I need to do is have DeAndre Carter match Deion Jackson or whatever. I mean, it looks like his ownership is going to be top five on FanDuel, top 10 on DraftKings, but it's still early. It's still early. These things shake out where he'll probably fall out of the top 10 on DraftKings in terms of ownership. I and think so. I think, that, I think if I had to pick of, of the Falcons running backs, Huntley is a little higher probability of getting two touchdowns. Okay. Andy I Chico. think that's fair. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, what, that's what I'm going. I'm going for who's going to get two touchdowns of these two guys. I think that's I think that's totally fair. I, I think last thing in 150, I think I would still mix in some Falcons running backs, even if CPAT's there. Maybe you put a little higher priority to CPAT, pray to God. You know, he's like the Swift of last week. We were like, if Swift is healthy mm-hmm. in this matchup at 6,800, he's a smash. He scored an early touchdown and he has since told us, literally told us he's not he's not healthy. But CPAT, if he's back to old C- CPAT had 100 yards and a touchdown not that long ago. And we've forgotten about him, and now it's the Chargers. So I just think I would I would still use some of the the Falcons uh, running backs. Anything else on this one before we move on? No, yeah, I think we've covered it. Eckler, Everett, some Carter, and then definitely be open to Falcons running backs because we know they're going to run the crap out of the ball for better or for worse. <laughs> I mean, this is Arthur Smith's, you know, dream, absolute dream scenario. It's a home game it. against a, a run funnel defense. Oh, my God. And yeah, being able to preach, keep the ball. I'm going to keep the ball away from Justin Hurt. You know the coaches love that shit. He's, he's just, in the NFC, so he only gets to play the Chargers once every four years. And once he sees that run defense on the schedule, <laughs> he circles that in in April. Yeah, exactly. So another bad run defense. Two bad run defenses actually in this next game, which is another thing that has me concerned. Packers and Lions mm. is a game that again we talk about the Lions every single week. Don't need to beat beat that to death. But you know a quote unquote get right spot if you will for the green bay packers but they similar to the chargers don't have any wide receivers that are doing anything aaron Rodgers is publicly blasting you know these these wide receivers we don't know if alan lazard will be back he's tech, uh, quite, uh, officially a game time decision i believe now not that he necessarily matters but he might matter for trickle down effect and then detroit for anybody that's been living under a rock traded tj hawkinson mm. this week DeAndre Swift is every day coming out with a new quote saying, and it gets worse. I, I'm not 
and now uh, I wasn't 100 percent, he said. And then now I'm I'm not even 90 percent. And now I don't know if I'll be 100 percent all year, he says. Right. So that doesn't that doesn't feel very good, um, except for maybe Jamal Williams. Yeah, he and said then, he might be up to 89 percent in week 16. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't exactly give me the warm, the warm and fuzzies um, for DeAndre Swift, but. You start removing Hawkinson. Maybe you remove some DeAndre Swift. Josh Reynolds has not practiced at all this week. DJ Chark is on IR. It does start to consolidate things on the Lions side, and we might be getting that consolidation on the Packers side too, right? Whether it be at wide receiver, if well, Lazard is gonna, out. You're not going to say the back. name? Say, say his name. <laughs> Who, Aaron Jones? The Khalif God. Raymond. Oh, Khalif oh, Raymond. Oh, all oh. thinking different guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, okay, he's about to say it. And the chats and the chats on Samari Torre. So we're literally yes. throwing all the different guys. Yes. But that's what makes this this game's fun. I think this game this game's pretty fun. Um, whether or not we're stacking it in in the end, oh, Khalif God. Raymond, Khalif Raymond, I think is a DeAndre Carter esque cheap, even cheaper punt play. Maybe maybe even more upside. I don't know. Um, and then I, I really like Aaron Jones. I have Aaron Jones tagged, and I also have DeAndre Carter tagged. By the way, in lineup HQ, um, Aaron Jones to me screams just a just as an absolute smash spot. For him at also probably criminally low ownership. Yeah, Dario he dreams oh. of this game. Yeah, uh, I did. think we've 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 hit on some some key things. First of all, you know, going into this show, I wasn't fully on board with how weird and bad the slate was. Now I get it. Now I understand. Okay, so that's that's one thing. And the second thing is, if there is a week to play a running back in flex, it's this week. I think that's another thing we're figuring out. And the other thing I would ask, is there a way that you could play lineups without a quarterback this week? <laughs> is, <laughs> yeah. can, is there a way? It's the, the opposite of super Can you flex. just all skip yeah. zero and no quarterback? <laughs> like, I'm trying to figure out a way to hack the system here because this is this is wacky. Yep. Let yeah. me get Austin Eckler in the quarterback spot and yeah, and Aaron uh, Jones in the in the in the running back spot. But um you definitely outlined this slate is bizarre because we're going to get through the two what should be the most appealing games, and we may not even land on a quarterback. On a no, quarterback, I, mean, I can't find a play. quarterback I want to play. <laughs> Dario, on? Dario, what, what's what's your kind of lead into this game? Because similar to what you mentioned with um, the Falcons, you know, just establishing the crap out of the ball, I have like concerns about both these teams coming in and being like, "All right, let's just let's just grind it out." You know, Rogers is going to run the play clock every single time. Oh. Um, I have concerns about the game environment and the, the run heaviness. What are, what are your thoughts on this one? I think definitely ha have that concern a little bit here, but not as strongly as I do with the Chargers and the Falcons and with another game on the slate, the Dolphins and the Bears. I think both those teams play just molasses slow. So I think that this game, I'm a little more, I can see an outcome that I think is pretty likely where the Packers do get ahead the Lions are kind of feeding Amon Ra in garbage time. Khalif Raymond gets his targets. Jamal Williams maybe punches in a touchdown. And I think the Packers, for most of the season, I think they've been underutilizing Aaron Jones. He's like their best offensive weapon, and it's not close. And in their last game against the Bills, even though they were losing, they stuck to the run because they knew that Aaron Jones was the only way they could move the ball. And against this Lions run defense, I think that Matt LaFleur will be able to figure that much out and feed Aaron Jones. And I think Aaron Jones will be able to get them a lead. And then I think you see the Lions in, you know, their most glorious state, which is garbage time. <laughs> what do you think, Matt? Yeah, pay up at running back. Eckler Jones. It's a lot of salary for the your that's the most salary we're going to devote to running back all year. This, but no one's that, doing that, that right? That's no, a big well, that's no a big that. takeaway here. That's a big takeaway because even the wide receivers, if we talk about it, other than Justin Jefferson, they're in these matchups that are either, you know, molasses, slow games, or it, there's just they're, they're coming off games where there were there was a, a, a like a like a Devonte Adams. Like now there's question marks. What's going on with this offense? Seattle doesn't actually allow that many fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. You just go down the board. And you're like, wait a second. Wait, a second. what is maybe this is. Yes. Can we play a running back in the quarterback position? <laughs> that's the Andre Carter. I mean, and Cody, Cody Freeman. <laughs> I don't know what to, I don't know what to say. This is uh, 
I can't. I I hate playing Packers, but Aaron Jones makes sense. I like Khalif Raymond. I like uh, St. Brown, of course. But the the backup tight end for Detroit, not athletic at all. So that I'm not playing that guy. Uh, Brock something right right yeah right God, is he back right. he, he did yes. get a concussion on sunday i was gonna i was gonna ask your take james mitchell of, maybe james maybe mitchell james... For, virginia tech he 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 was kind of a big play ish hybrid wide receiver tight end at virginia tech as as big play ish as as you can be at virginia tech in the <laughs> passing game but you know what i mean he was i thought that that was mildly interesting oh. he was a fifth fifth round pick you guys would know better about him than i though he hadn't he didn't play hardly in his final year at virginia tech we only have his high school workouts he wasn't an impressive uh, high school recruit he was you know a, an average dominator rating you know average just at i mean he's just 250 pounds he's not super twitchy i, yeah. I, I think... don't know this is tough man this is just another game where i want a salary save on on my on my Khalif raymond <laughs> and uh kind of you know play aaron jones and move on it's, it's, it's this is this is chargers Falcons 2.0. That's all this is. I I do think I have to chime in with this take that it's not too galaxy brained to play Aaron Rodgers with Aaron Jones and then one of his, you know, receivers and just like say some prayers on Sunday morning. That when he... was the last time Aaron Rodgers took down a Millie Maker? Probably the last time he did it was when he played the Lions. <laughs> I'm just, I'm that's a genuine question for the chat. I I did, someone must know. It had I don't know. It was last year at some point was it last year? Did he? Did he though? Plays so slow. I don't know. I don't know how he can do it. And he just he, he stopped. You know, once he stopped running a few years ago, and with with the pace and and <sighs> Nat. Now you know at least then he had Devonte Adams and, and frankly MVS, and you could say look. Against the Lions, hit an 80 yarder to MVS, and you know Devontae's going to get his 30 or whatever. Maybe they could drag Rodgers along to a big score, and then the Lions are going to fight back. It's like, unless I guess, yeah, two screens to Aaron Jones and he rips off long. I just don't see how. And and Rodgers isn't even low owned. He's actually quite popular because he projects well because it's the Lions. I, I almost would rather, and I. You, you hate playing Packers, Matt. I I despise Jared Goff in fantasy. Like no, too you much. Play him. You can't I think you can. I think you, I think I think you can. But because quarterback is so bad this week, Aaron Jones destroys gets <clears throat> gets the Packers out to a big lead. Goff is is throwing the whole. You know. You know. They're doing the Lions thing, coming back, and it's Amon Ra, and it's like Khalif Raymond, and that's it. Yeah. So you you kind of have guys to play, so it just makes sense mm-hmm. in terms of building building that team, and it's it's cheap too. So, I guess, I guess, man, this is I, the week. I wish you, I, you said God, the week I, sucks. I, I I came into this show enthusiastic. I worked out today, <laughs> right? Like I I'm drinking coffee. I'm energized. I I got caffeine. I was. This is really draining. <laughs> I'm not. I just can't. What? <laughs> Dario, what do you think on this I th- last, this game? Yeah, I think that that ownership number for Rogers definitely scares me a little bit. I think if because yeah, it, at this price tag with the upside we know that Rogers has against the Lions, given his career, that would be encouraging. But I think that the ownership, if you're going to play Rogers, definitely like in a portfolio of lineups, be below the field, maybe sprinkle in five percent or something if if, if no. you're making a if you're making 20 for example make one rogers lineup i think that's what i would how i would approach this well okay so <laughs> last time that he put up a big number more than say 25 fantasy points week 11 last year at minnesota i was gonna Remember say that? minnesota he, went, he they, almost hit yeah. 400 yards he had four tds he was on f- absolutely in fuego that's one of those mvs games you remember that was 120 yards and a touchdown for MVS. And then Adams also had two touchdowns. Yeah. That's My it. question is, I do believe though, I believe wide receiver quality matters. That's one of the reasons why I can't play this guy because he doesn't have Adams. And he doesn't even have MVS. 
He has rookies that drop passes. And Sammy Watkins. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah, I just don't see how and he, he may prove me wrong. He may go throw for 400 or whatever, but I struggle to see how Rodgers, like Rodgers, Dobbs, Tunyon, who all project well and in a vacuum seem fine because it's the Lions and they're cheap. But I just struggle to see how that, like say with an Amon Ra bring, bound, bring back, given all the ownership that's getting on those guys, it's like, how do you win a tournament that way? You know what I mean? I, it's just, Mm-mm. I really struggle with it. So Jones Raymond. Done. Pay up a running back. Use our, use the our, Lions and move on. Use yeah. our cheap, cheap, crappy. That's what I'm saying. I, I'm did, trying to receivers. not. I'm trying to see it. You know, I, I did the research. I just did it. The chat helped me. Right. We did. We found the game. The game. What? What is that? Out of what? Twenty five games. The last twenty five. Mm-hmm. Okay. We got one. With okay, Adam let's and MVS. Yeah, with Adams and MBS, not not Samari Torre and uh, Romeo Dobbs. Yeah. Um, all right, let's talk about a quarterback that everybody always wants to play, as as they should. Bills take on the Jets, which is another interesting. I'll, I'll just keep using the word interesting because sometimes it's not that interesting, but interesting in a way that it's Josh Allen, and you theoretically don't want to say anything negative about it. But again, this game environment, because of how good the Bills defense is, and frankly, the Jets defense is pretty solid too, and the Jets offense is not so solid, it, it, the, the game environment feels bad, right? So it's like you're never going to feel bad about <clears throat> Josh Allen, Diggs, Gabe Davis, whatever. But then even with Singletary, who we sprinkled a little bit in the past, now they bring Hines in. It's, it, it's, a, it's a gross game. Dario, how, how do we go about approaching this one from a stacking perspective in tournaments? I think Gabe Davis is kind of and anytime you have a spot where the bills are heavily favored, like my mind goes to Gabe Davis because just like the upside that he has on any given play, 98 yard touchdowns. So it's really interesting to me that he's actually cheaper on FanDuel than he is on DraftKings, like period point blank. That's crazy. Even though there's 10,000 more dollars to work with on FanDuel. So I bet that the ownership numbers are just crazy skewed with him. And I think that he's someone that depending on what site you're playing on, like just kind of using him differently because of that crazy value that he is on FanDuel right now. But I think you definitely want to play some of him because we just know how good Josh Allen is. We know how good this Bill's offense is and they don't stop passing the ball when they get ahead. That's what kind of what sets them apart from any other team in the NFL is they're ahead. They're going to say, we're well, going to keep throwing on you because we know it works. We don't care. So I think that that's why you play Josh Allen in these spots where if this was Jalen Hurts, if this was, you know, um, like Joe Burrow, you, there's always that concern of, oh, if they do get ahead in this spot, like they might not, they might just take their foot off the gas, but the bills, you don't really have to worry about that. Dawson Knox too. Right. Bill's Bill's a tight end. I mean, Diggs. Two tight end to our two two touchdown upside. I, that's I, I I don't really have anything negative to say about the Bills, but I guess my question for you guys is: so get, to me, Garrett Wilson makes the fairly clear and obvious bring back. I guess if we really wanted to talk about Michael Carter, we could do it, but I think it's probably a little too much at a really strong running back position. As we're as we're outlining, we want to play like five running backs, and Michael Carter's probably not one of them. But Garrett Wilson screams this obvious bring back for a lot of games it's just can the jets be uh, and zach wilson be successful Tredavious enough lights back yeah I, th- th- <sighs> that that's my concern too um but he would be the guy right i i, I would say it looks like mims is going to play over elijah moore <laughs> again i don't know if you saw that quote um from robert oh, solid today but um ha- yeah ha- josh allen to gabe davis stacks with garrett wilson bring back I, you know what do you guys feel about some stuff like that yeah Josh, I love it. I love yes that that makes a lot of that you could actually play Jones and Eckler with Josh Allen if you stack with Gabe Davis. It's not really possible with Diggs. It is with Gabe Davis. And I think Tyler Conklin is the other bring back who's even ah, remotely yeah. in play. I'm surprised his ownership's not higher given that his price is still dirt cheap because he's coming off just a massive game. He's kind of reasserted himself as the number one tight end there was a week there i think immediately when cj uzama came back where that 
that Conklin goose egg kind of scared us all off of him for a little while, but yes, his snap share has been steady. His routes have been up around 60% and he was the number one tight end in all of fantasy football last week. So I'm kind of shocked that he projects below 5% ownership on both sites. We know that Corey Davis is out again. So there's plenty of targets to get to Tyler Conklin. And I think that if I, you know, if I'm the Jets coaches right now, I'm telling Zach Wilson, like whatever you do, if it's not, if it's already been more than three, like get rid of the ball in less than three seconds, whatever it may cost. And then if it's been more than three seconds, just throw it away. So I think that those short throws looking for Tyler Conklin, he had, was it 10 targets? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was a season long, but he's had games of seven, eight, nine targets. So I think yep. at 3,200 on DraftKings, that's that's my other bring back that I think is very much in play. I'm going to be playing some Wilson, but I don't think that he is going to be a, a, a better value than, say, Raymond or even Terrace Marshall. There's a ton of value a little bit down the board from uh, Garrett Wilson, and the game environment is not necessarily – great for him just because the, the opposing defense and that secondary is just so smothering. Yes, they're going to be a lot of garbage time. They're going to be in comeback mode. That's the part of the game environment you like. The, the matchup part is the is the part that, that is suboptimal. However, Wilson getting benched at the half is interesting. If they bring in Mike White, that could actually fuel more Garrett Wilson because Garrett Wilson has the athleticism. He has the athleticism to go get it in traffic. He has the athleticism to break tackles. You want a guy, if you're going to go up against this Bill's secondary, you can't go up against that secondary with Corey Davis. Can't do it, right? Braxton Barrios, guys like that, get out of here, right? Value receivers, no, right? The guy needs to have, fortunately, what you have in a sub-5K wide receiver that one day is going to be a 7K wide receiver Yeah. in Garrett Wilson. That's what you want. You want a guy that can actually go get these 50-50 balls and make plays on his own, that is actually the way you can get there against the secondary. So I do like Garrett Wilson for that reason, but I don't love him. I I, I want to sort of limit exposure to this game. I think it's going to get dragged into the mud. I think you want a salary save with Allen and Davis and Conklin. I think that that to me is the my favorite, uh, very lightly stacked option. It, it, this this reminded me of um, last week when we talked about the Dolphins game where we just, you know, you go through and you're like, you you either like or, or dislike kind of every option. In this case, it was more so that we kind of disliked the Jets. But you get to the end and you're like, okay, well, I want to play Josh Allen stacks. I, I agree with you guys. on. I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to. Uh, push me into a, a good old Gabe Davis uh, tout that I do that for months and months on end. Yeah. Um, but obviously like Stefan Diggs, you can't, can't really hate on Stefan Diggs either, but like, I don't have concerns about the bills. Right. And I feel like there's two, maybe three, if we want to include Dawson Knox guys that I feel confident in playing, but I agree with Garrett Wilson. And we talked about this with Mike Kosicki where it was like, look, I love the, the, the two, a double stacks, but like, that's a lot of money, <laughs> you know, like it, it costs a lot. And the wide receiver position is so valuable that I really love to use the tight end in my double stacks or in my game stacks, right? You can play the Allen to Gabe. You get maybe Allen runs one in and he throws the two bombs to Gabe Davis like he did a couple of weeks ago. And I want to, because we know that the Jets are not going to be that successful or that's our expectation, using the least um, opportunity cost position with the least amount of money on Tyler Conklin, who like beside the two games, like Dario said, besides the two games, when uh, uh, Uzoma came back, it's like seven targets every week. He had 10 targets last week. It's a great <laughs> call. That's why Dario, he's already, awesome call. you know, all, awesome he's all, call. you know, already, I've, I've already, I've forgotten all about Jacob I've forgotten all about him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I really like, when we're going to struggle still after these next few games that we go through to find a be like, this stack is just the smash. When in doubt, we can just play a Josh Allen stack and we have this tight end savings that fits so well into roster construction. You want Eckler, you want Jones, you want those guys. That I think this is a pretty fun, fun way to do it. Anything else, Bills, Jets, from either of you guys before we move on? 
Yeah, I think not much else there. Just remember not to overthink Josh Allen. Like we all know that of all the quarterbacks on the slate, of all the stacks on the slate that could just go completely nuclear, this is the one with the highest chance of doing so. And Gabriel Davis is a four touchdown game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's it. That's it. That's it. He and uh, Chase Claypool. Can... Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, you know, I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, uh, I'm glad that's the uh, potentially the last playing Dolphins Bears. <laughs> Dol- Dolphins Bears on the list, but I want to talk about um, so we can do Dario. If you want to share your screen, uh, walk through the uh, optimizer with Seahawks Cardinals because I think Finally. this is a, the, this There's is definitely a game. Here's this is a definitely game. a game. Yeah, this is definitely a game. But um, I'm, I'm interested to see where you guys are are headed because it's kind of like also James. I guess I should quick housekeeping. James Conner is a game time decision again. I, I I don't know what's going on with him. Everything else seems I believe Marquis Goodwin is questionable. Other and than that, it's it's wheels actually, up. Actually, on the on the low key um, degree of transactions, Daryl Williams was put back on the IR. Good call. So mm-hmm. that does make things a little less murky because if if he's healthy. And you have the Connor Williams Eno disaster, like then you really don't want to touch him. But I think him being out means that, like, even if Connor plays, right? Say Connor plays on the first drive, he's like, "Ooh, I shouldn't have played today, guys." <laughs> you get a Eno, you get a baby. massive Eno, Eno at low game. ownership. Yes. Yeah. So I think that yes. this actually creates a potentially nice leverage spot for Eno. Again, like, there's no shortage of cheap running backs we're interested in. There's no shortage of elite running backs we've talked about on this slate, but. I think that that Daryl Williams back on the IR actually kind of really affects that backfield in a significant way. Good hey, you're flexing Eno. We're playing running backs and flex this week. <laughs> Eno at quarterback. But it also yeah. would give you options in that flex spot looking. You know, there's only two afternoon games, but you have both in this game. You have Ken Walker on one side and you have you could have Eno on the other. If you have some combinations in this game, skinny stacks, all that kind of stuff, you could be able to, you know, you get to the afternoon. Maybe you didn't hit the stone cold nuts in the early slate. You have Walker. You can swap to Eno and then go to whatever, uh, you know, Metcalf or something off of, of somebody right. you have or go Mike Hopkins Evans off of Metcalf or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, So I guess right. let's... uh. Do we want to get started here? I think that the biggest thing for me in this game is I think the crowd, the market is kind of overreacting to that 19 to nine dud that we got between these two teams a couple of weeks ago. The ownership for Lockett and Metcalf is really not as high as you would expect it to be in a game that has a total over 50. It's the highest, it's the highest total on the slate. And we were excited for this game two weeks ago for good reason. And, you know, football can just be random like that. Two teams can shoot out one week and then hold each other down the following. So DeAndre Hopkins being back instead of Marquise Brown changes things too. This is the game that Marquise Brown got hurt a couple of weeks ago. So I guess if we're talking about stacking Gino, it's funny that our default assumption is stack Gino. Like, forget Kyler. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah stack yeah. Gino. Things, things, but things that we never thought we would have been saying uh, before the season started. Like, oh yeah, don't even worry about Kyler. Just play, just play Geno Smith. But we, we could also look once we run this through, Love see Kyler. what maybe Kyler, Kyler Love stats Kyler too. Like too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where do you guys start with, um, with the weapons though from from Geno? Because I'm really interested in this in this stack. Uh, can you play just both? Uh, not can you? Would you prefer to play both Metcalf and Lockett? Or are we looking at that? A hole, Noah Fant at tight end again, or just single stacking Gino? What's kind of the preference? I do think that they're kind of like a cheaper Tyreek and Waddle, right? They're like very good, explosive, talented wide receivers who we know are like capable of elevating their offense. And you can have, we've seen games where both of them absolutely smash. So I think this is one where maybe we don't want to overthink it. And definitely build some lineups with the two of them. Hey, like, why not? Yeah, let's do it. Smash it. See where this goes. As you're doing this um, and setting the the settings, uh, one thing I love about a game like this put 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 running back at flex. Okay, good call. Is you know, oh you want to see what that looks like instead of so instead of nuke we're bringing back. Connor or Eno? Is that what's is that what's this is doing? Oh, well, we're going to have lots of different combinations. We have Ertz here. Oh, oh, it's just oh, got it, got it, got it. Um, 
the, yeah, but we anyways, forced the the single we, the single team stack, but we didn't we didn't uh, force any runbacks. Interesting that Ertz does show up. As I a, I as... did force a run back. There's going to be okay. at least one because I think between Ertz, Rondale, Hopkins, and like sprinkling, you know, I think that there's enough interesting things on the Cardinal side that you don't want to play naked Seahawks stacks. Yeah, and I like to to as we start to scroll through this, I like how you know Nuke is probably the the preference, and you just get like so much of the targets on both sides that again on a gross slate where we're kind of not expecting any game to be 45 42, if you get if you just so happen to get like 28 27 in this game, you could just soak up everything. Right. Because mm-hmm. you have all you have such high target shares. It's like you said, it's like a baby dolphins game, kind of. Yep. This is very chalky. Ramondre, ETN, Palmer, Nixon. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even see that. Wow. Who's in the defense? Probably uh, defense commanders. Commanders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But so here's a question. Oh, there's How a Deion much... Jackson. Oh, then there's with your Foreman and Foreman. See, this is a little bit better. Hopkins yeah, this is just a, this is a little this is a little this is lower ownership for sure. Yeah, I mean this that, ownership that, number that on Deion Jackson gonna go is going to be like thirty five percent. Yeah, yeah, Deion Jackson. Oh my god, I don't know. But Zach very, Moss is going to maybe throw a monkey wrench in this. I'm very curious what um, you guys think. Really quickly, I know we're doing game stacks and stuff, but say you're building this game stack: Geno Lockett Metcalf with, let's just say it's probably going to be um, Nuke. Ertz or Rondale. So you're not using any of those potential running back spots. How are you guys kind of prioritizing the running back spots around a probably a pretty low owned game ish? So you're you're kind of worried about ownership, but not too much. You know, we have ETN, you have Deion Jackson, you have Foreman, you have Ramondre. Do you guys have a, a, a preference for building around a stack like this with those running backs? Oh, I, don't, I think I've I've been just kind of looking at the chalk this week, and I think they for the most part, I haven't seen anyone that looks like major fool's gold. Yeah. So I think I'm still kind of waiting to get a better feel over the course of today, tomorrow, to really hone in on who my favorite chalk plays are. Like, I think ETN is just absolutely smashing this year. We love Travis ETN. And then Ramondre, another guy. I think that Damian Harris is obviously an injury to monitor. Um, in the context yeah, of Ramondre, come. and then I think Mixon, you never the line of genius loves Mixon, playing. Bro. Oh God, I was hoping we wouldn't have to talk about Joe Mixon. Yeah, the line of genius is uh, is a fan. Well, Mixon has the strongest indicator for positive touchdown regression in the entire league. He's like underperformed his expected touchdowns by like two more touchdowns than the next strongest underperform or next, I guess most you know you guys what i'm saying yeah um we get it so (laughs) so i think it's a home game against the panthers yeah this is another one of those things like if you're not going to play mixing this week never play him yeah Mm -hmm. and i might never (laughs) we might we might have just reached we might have just reached um that 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 territory but anyway I, I thought in the context of this game which is like this is a huge perk of this game right you play the geno doubles who do you want to play at running back you can do it do you want Eckler? Do you want Ramondre? Do you want Mixon or whatever? They all fit around this game stack, and so that's another huge perk of it. Oh yeah, no, it's great. This that that's why we, we this has been the, the gift of Gino. He himself only five point eight k still. Mm-hmm. Very true. They haven't they haven't moved him up enough, so we just keep playing him. That's we have to do it. We have to. Yeah. It's, it's pretty funny that he's he's still significantly less expensive than say Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, well, not, should, it, not, signif- not significantly. <laughs> yeah. Not significantly. But he shouldn't be. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. No, 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 he's not significant. He's one hundred dollars less. There's still less, <laughs> though. I, th- th- those are the worst use of significantly in the history of podcasting. <laughs> no, no, there's probably worse. Uh, I, for some reason, I had I had six point nine k, but even the, at five point nine k, still not interested, Roger. Sorry, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna fool <laughs> me. The ownership is the biggest thing for me. If you're like directly comparing Gino and Rogers, like based on the way they've played this year, you would think Rogers would be just being slightly more faded by the market and productions right. in general. But the, if you can get Gino, a hundred dollars is, is never going to make or break a lineup, probably. But just getting him cheaper and lower owned 
I, I think that's a pretty clear sign. And he's just the weapons, right? We talk, Matt, you've been hammering home how much receivers matter for quarterbacks. And, you know, if, if Aaron Rodgers had Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf to throw to, we'd be firing him up every week too. <laughs> yeah. Well, we would make <laughs> the maybe, conversation. On, but the conversation on the Lions game with the Packers would have been a whole lot different if he had, if he had one of them, if he just had DK Metcalf, we would be like, okay, how the hell do we fade, you know, this and, but he, but he doesn't. And Gino has those guys right against we, it hasn't come through in the biggest way yet, but the Cardinal secondary is something since the week one, since the first episode of this show that has ever aired where we were like the Cardinals secondary, particularly okay. their boundary corners is like the worst, some of the worst, if not the worst in the league, attack it and just attack it every week. It worked week one. It, it has been up and down throughout the course of, of the year. I mean, Andy Dalton threw for like 400 yards on these, on these guys. So yeah. like, it's gonna, it's gonna happen. It's just, oh. as Dario said, it was 19, nine in this matchup before the Seahawks have kind of been not as, not as awesome for fantasy over the last month or whatever. And people are just writing it off. Oh, you, you got to keep going back to it. it just, go back to the settings, Dario. Mm -hmm. uh, and see if we can force in uh, Eckler and then yeah, turn well, uh, up the nice. it turn force in Eckler and then I'm turn gonna, up the correlation. I'm going to keep Lockett in on it. Yeah, keep, love, keep Lockett. Love Tyler Lockett. Force in Eckler. Now turn up the correlation high. Correlation yeah. high under stacking. No, not chalk. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> and he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, now turn that up. So now we can do uh, more skinny stacking. This looks, this looks good. Yeah. You guys don't want a high chalk lineup. <laughs> that was the that was the first. I, I one. think we had no preference. See, look at <laughs> look at we, we got we got Walker and Eckler. Oh my God, and Etn. Look at this. Oh my. What do you guys think about playing? Walk? So th th that's another kind of not difficult part of this game. It's actually easy, but it, if you don't want to jam Lockett and Metcalf into all your stacks, will you play some Walker with him? With him, will you play some Fant, or would you? Or would you just then prefer to go with a single stack if you're not going to play both wide receivers? By forcing the high correlation and only selecting one of the receivers, we actually almost like engineered this to include Walker. If you did this, there is a setting, I believe, where you could say do not uh, allow running backs to be stacked with their quarterback. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. So we could turn that off. If, if, the, if, the, if the natural running back option is someone that you don't believe correlates well uh, where it will walk I, th I think the jury's still out right now, homer's right. playing right he definitely was uh he's not hurt uh, again i mean he's he's hurt, no. he gets hurt every other week so i'm, I'm only <laughs> yeah. have to, i have to ask the question so it, i believe it, he's back i think if homer's in it's a little it's it, it hurts the the reception upside a little bit for walker but I still think Walker can can catch passes. Mm -hmm. I think that he he's competent in that area, and it's not the craziest thing to do here. Because we're, we're this is a, this is what a game stack is. We are betting that this is this is a game. We, we hate these other games. I like this game. I want to mm -hmm. see I want to see Kyler stacks too. Mm -hmm. I this, think it, this is this every everything about this game screams play it stack it. This is why we have the show. Everything else that we've talked about is like. All the reasons not to stack it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really do to. like Rondale. I really do like that it yes. brings up Rondale here. Um, like everybody, I think, just not because, Ertz. We, but, can, we can also exclude Ertz, too. That's another option in the in the settings. Mm -hmm. Everybody will play Hopkins on the brink. Right. There, the, you're, we're not going like this game is not crazy chalky, but I guarantee you if you start Geno, Metcalf, Lockett, Hopkins, there's going to be a, a, a no matter what tournament you're in, somebody else is going to have that start. You may get different somewhere mm -hmm. else, but people are going to have that start. The moment you start deviating from that, Rondale, Eno, including Ken Walker, you start doing that, you're getting the same game environment that those other people are at low-ish ownership, and now you have a just a slightly different build that's just that's just as good. That's absolutely just as good. Um, so I really like the Rondale inclusion. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Matt, I hate to break it to you, but Zach Ertz is the tight end three in points per game this year. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. oh you missed 10, the last show. We, 10 we, targets. We said, we said never, never Zach Ertz. He, his, his, his per target ceiling is so bad. You know, he's just not an efficient player anymore. <laughs> we saw, he's however, this would be the week, right? I mean, you can't play Everett in every lineup or right. Conklin. And the Seahawks have been a pretty good matchup for tight ends. So I mm -hmm. think 
That's all right. You can play some Ertz. I'm just saying. Jesus, he's 5100. Why does this price keep going? I guess nobody else does anything, and he scores 12 points every week. So his, but why, I don't know why his price. Yeah, he hasn't know. scored more than he had one 16 point game. This season. Er, Eric That's is it. a fan of spike weeks, and, and that, yes. you, you just you just don't get those from Ertz, unfortunately. <laughs> You'll notice in the old Probably baseball the... portfolio, there is zero Zach Hurts because of exactly what you just said. <laughs> he's, he's, lowest... a, he's a spike week aficionado. <laughs> he's the, the lowest standard deviation among all tight ends. <laughs> yes, of um, course. Yeah. Can I right, can so I throw let... out one crazy one last crazy thing before we do that? And maybe this go to you can start building the Kyler settings because Kyler. he fits more. He fits more on the Kyler side. Oh, Kyler. You want a Millie? If, if you want a, a, a sprinkle in this game stack, maybe this is your highest portfolio exposure game stack, right? Which I think is maybe what we're getting to over these mm-hmm. last 10, 15, 10 minutes or so. Put an a Aaron guy Jones I, in this one. I a guy, did, yeah. love that. A guy I would sprinkle into my probably into my Kyler stacks because I think he would be the unlock of Kyler's ceiling is Robbie Anderson. He didn't Ooh. get as much playing time as we had hoped last year or last week. Um, did have three targets on a very minimal <laughs> route share. But Cliff came out and said, Pick basically, him. we need to, we need to get Robbie involved. And he said something about like we're gonna force feed him the ball, or something. Mm. Now it's Cliff, it's Cliff. So let like I'm not going, I'm not getting out over my skis with anything that Cliff says. But I think it's at least interesting, right? A like 0.1 percent owned Robbie Anderson. Maybe this is the week he plays all the snaps, gets the downfield targets, and uh, that 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 could be the Millie type play. Right. I can, I, I can we can allow can we allow RB stacks here with with Eno? He's a he's yeah. a pass catcher, right? We or could. or not? No. I think that turn it off. Turn it off. Yeah, the way that I envision, I don't know, a big Kyler game, probably because you know we have to keep in mind Kyler is more of a running threat. He has to run in. Okay, Gino. I got it. Yep, I'm with yep. you. I understand. Good call. I understand what's happening. <laughs> yeah. So, well. That the Kyler so doesn't really these... run for touchdowns. See, I, I like this with Walker. The Kyler stealing, you know, the Seahawks get out ahead. This is great. Walker 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 crushes in two 60 yard touchdowns like he does every other week. You get your you get awesome other running back plays, ETN and Aaron Jones, and a completely our boy DeAndre Carter, and a completely, completely unowned Kyler stack that includes that includes Robbie Anderson like this team is beautiful all right and Robbie Anderson is not going to project he didn't even pick well Hopkins. yeah it just happened it just yeah. of With course a... yeah I was gonna say Robbie Anderson's never gonna project well because we yep we like like you said we don't know what his role is but when you're shooting for those tail outcomes where something just kind of unexpected comes to fruition and you want to be in position to benefit from that I think that Robbie Anderson at 3800 completely off the map is is pretty sharp uh look at that upside pivot. projection for deandre carter 18 yeah. Love it. that's his 90th percentile outcome i mean the other that's thing not about a crazy this... that's not that's not crazy at all and the other can we take really a second to talk ahead. about kenneth walker travis etn aaron jones as the three running backs in this lineup like we're gonna have to delete this recording because this team is making it move over here. We might be entering this team into uh, into into some tournaments. Yeah. But oh think about God. it: like you can just have people are gonna be complaining. Oh, look at these three <laughs> running back lineups that are crushing this week. Oh, gross! <laughs> when I win the millie with it, they can yeah. suck it for all I care. It's like, did but, you see the slate? Yeah, <laughs> but I like this also because you know it's it's jamming the the best plays we got our Aaron Jones in there ETN is just no one's saying anything negative about ETN it fits the perfect uh game scenario game script with Ken Walker and the Kyler stack and then even i don't know if it if it you know i don't know the 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 nuts and bolts behind it what's what's working uh Getting DeAndre Carter in there i know the projection is is really good but he also adds that little extra bit of leverage because people are going to play Palmer you know, people are probably going to play Everett and you're just little minor tinkers throughout the course of this entire lineup that like no one would look at it and say, oh, that's like, that's too crazy. They don't say that, but it's still like a really high leverage, unique lineup. Right. So you like when I look at this, for example, I'm looking in at Evan Ingram right now and it surprises me that he's more expensive than Tyler Conklin and higher owned. Like this is someone where I could very easily see myself just saying, Let's flip those two guys. I'm a bigger believer in Conklin. 
And I personally feel even better about that lineup after doing that. Kaboom. Yeah, the only thing we're missing is a bill. Yeah, which is true. You could probably do something with um, Hopkins if you wanted to take Carter out or something. You know, you could you could tinker around with uh, uh, Rondale and a and Diggs or something. Yeah, that, that, can, those lineups are probably down the board. If you if you just keep going, you know, yeah, line yeah, yeah. Line Let's see what else I'm sure there are bills yeah, yeah, yeah. that are going to show up. So I, I think you could have done put Nuke up to Diggs and Carter to Rondale and have a Rondale. And Robbie Anderson double stack with Kyler. <laughs> that, those are a thing, I'm sure. It, some someone's gonna try to just have you know, the you, have the we're bracket Hopkins the whole game defense, aren't they? Someone's gonna do that. You would think. <laughs> uh, uh, breaking news, which is relevant to this show. So Keenan Allen is officially ruled out. DeAndre Carter is questionable with an illness. I'm hoping oh, he's flu just game gotta, coming. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, hoping it's, I'm hoping that's what we get. Not, we need not the flu we game. Get. DeAndre yeah. Jordan. Wait, also, that's isn't actually it another player. <laughs> <laughs> DeAndre Jordan. Isn't it weird that NFL players just stopped getting COVID? You guys yeah. Illness. Thought about yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Funny how that works. Um, let's flip through a couple more of these and then I want to hit. I want to hit one more game because I do think uh, there's some concerns, but also some interesting airs or Raiders Jags. Cause I'm seeing a bunch of Jaguars showing up in these lineups. I, I, I like both. If we want to, if we want to hit the, the, the Jags game, we can too, but I also think there's a couple interesting variables to the dolphins. Yeah. Let's talk um, about dolphins. Yeah. Okay. Let's hit dolphins bears. Real quick, or let, let's, let's see if there's anything else that pops out here. Oh, we got a Brock right lineup. <laughs> oh, baby. Mm. Metcalf. With Hopkins, love to bring back there. No oh, Metcalf, yeah. Oh, See, Evan Ingram again. McLaurin. McLaurin's been so good. McLaurin, yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, oh, well, we could, we could, uh, we get, we can just exclude Reynolds in the future. Yeah. There's your Khalif Raymond, of course, for Reynolds. Let's see, mix. Liz- it does like Mixon. Lazard's gonna get out of there. Does like mixing. Yeah, I mean, I understand why. Well, the, the, he's chalky. It. Yeah. All right, boys. Let's right. uh, let's talk right. dolphins. 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 Bears <clears throat> is the, is the next one. I think dolphins are like low key on our list. You know, they're not the lion. They're the offensive version of the lions, where like every week they present upside at multiple positions and everything is so consolidated and we know they're going to throw. And frankly, we know they're going to be successful throwing because it's a great coach with Tua throwing to Tyreek and Waddle. The issue is they're playing the Bears this week. Now you say, oh, what do you mean? They're going to score a bunch of points on the Bears. Yeah, probably. But Dario outlined the pace of this game is an absolute slog. The Dolphins throw and they're, they score, but they, they play really slow. And the Bears, I mean, if the Bears could run 35 plays in a game, they probably would would choose to. Is this a Tua They're, thing? Do you do you think that McDaniel wants to play fast and and Tua just it, it, he just doesn't like to? I don't it's know. It's interesting. Right. It's like I the think... one flaw in McDaniel, he he seems to get everything else right. Seems to be clearly the most you know the savviest of these rookie coaches. It but they play a... slow. That's it could be issue. a with golf situation where they are taking a little bit more time pre-snap because it's like a little more puppeteering mm. than most other quarterbacks. That could be it too. That could be Makes it too. sense. All I know is like we talked about before, there's not a lot of exciting tight ends in the slate and give me a, give me a reason to play Gusecki. Yep. And again, he'll be, he'll be a, a leverage way to play your dolphin stacks. You're, you're, you're not going to run out of a, sh- or you're not going to run into a shortage of Tyreek Waddle double sacks with Tua in, in tournaments. I'm not saying it's crazy popular, but look, Tyreek Hill just keeps absolutely dominating. And Jalen Waddle had a 30 spot last game and, and, and it, it, it keeps working right on a slate where there's not much that anybody wants to cl- click in. They know that they're going to get their volume in this dolphins passing stack. The problem is the, the bear side like i don't want to play any of these wide receivers tight ends running backs on the bears but what dario and i were discussing before before the show do you want to fit in some of these superstars do you want to fit in the the superstars on the dolphin side but also maybe you want eckler or you want aaron jones or whatever i i don't think a naked justin fields like m- kind of making fields your bring back at 5300 right 
Tua throws all his passes to Tyreek and Waddle anyway. Or Gasicki. Fields Waddle stacks. That, yeah, like Fields, naked Fields skinny stacks or naked, you know, Fields, using Fields as the bring back to your Dolphins players. That would essentially basically. be like not playing a quarterback. Yeah, that's, what's the that, difference? That, what we <laughs> talked about half an hour ago. Take a running like, back. Can you, can you not play a quarterback? You're essentially saying that. Like he's just a he's just a bring back. He's not really a position. Correct. I love that's that. A, I freaking yeah. love that idea. So that's all I really have on that on this game. Yeah. But I, I thought that, that's that we, we fun. I, I thought I thought that that was a, a pretty interesting way to build teams because he's you know, super you don't cheap. Always have to follow the same formula, right? Mm-hmm. You could get some. You can do weird shit. Especially when the slate is so underwhelming and you get one game you like, do some weird shit. Permission to do some weird shit. Fields with Gasecki and Waddle. Fuck it. I don't see why that can't. I, I really don't see why that can't win win tournaments. What do you think, Dario? Yeah, I mean, Fields' rushing prompt is like 50 yards, and that's <laughs> egregiously low because he's been like over 80 for most of the last few weeks so yeah I, i'm very much on board with this and we all know that trusting anyone in this bears passing game is like you know <laughs> it's like just set your money on fire instead of playing dfs if you're going to do that yes um I, I just wanted to say over the last month justin field's lowest scoring game would be the highest scoring game for aaron Rodgers. Just throwing that out there. Mm. Nobody, nobody's interested in Fields. His lowest game in the last month is 17 fantasy points. Aaron Rodgers has not reached 17 fantasy points in the in the last month. So, you know, just, just did a I little... mention that we don't we don't really like Rodgers around here? <laughs> <laughs> has that is is that horse dead? I think that horse is I think that horse is dead. Um, <laughs> last game. <laughs> Last game we were going to talk about is Raiders Jags, and I do think uh, I, I am glad you're forcing us to talk about this one because. Uh, Travis Etienne looks like a smash. Josh Jacobs is projecting really well. The Raiders, Raiders literally, not an exaggeration, did not get to midfield until the middle of the fourth quarter last week it against the Saints. Two minutes left in the fourth quarter. Eric. <laughs> yeah, it was, and it was a uh, whoever the it, car wasn't even in. They benched everybody, and then they got to midfield. Um, but the Jags have been the Jags made the Broncos scores. The Jags D actually allowed the Broncos, you know distract uh disaster of an offense score some points so i do think the raiders look like they're in a good spot and matt mentioned jags you know ingram and some of these and etn obviously are showing up in a lot of optimals yeah, yeah, i think the, the computer Jag- likes these guys the jags look good so um we should talk about this one what's your uh matt what's your initial lean on on this game yeah skinny stack again skinny stack you're doing weird shit at quarterback this week you know we're, we're doing some fields and we're we're, we're, we're kyler gino and of course, Josh Allen, and then you're doing weird stuff, right? And then when you, when you turn up the correlation on the lineup genius, boom, it's giving you these Jacobs. You saw a lot of these uh, Jacobs Ingram. Yeah. And that's fine. You're going to get some Kirk in there. It's all good, man. It's all good. Mm-hmm. It's just it's probably not going to be a shootout. That's yeah. the issue. It's I don't just, think it's not teeing up to be a shootout, fellas. I wish it was, and I know some people might think it might be, and the, the game total is 48. That's kind of that's kind of cool. But I, I don't see it, man. I don't see it. I think that if I if I was betting, I would bet on this going under, and I would bet on Arizona, Seattle going over. What do you think, Dario? Right. And I think that Josh Jacobs, I mean, he's chalky as well, but I think there's a lot more enthusiasm around Travis Etienne. He's kind of like the shiny new toy, but Josh Jacobs has been just so good this year and Derek Carr has been equally bad so I think that if I'm Josh McDaniels you probably want to be keeping the ball in Josh Jacobs's hands as much as you can and like you just said the Jaguars defense made the Broncos looked good look good <laughs> Melvin Gordon and Latavius Murray both found the end zone so even Russ is- even, even Russ threw a touchdown uh I hate to talk about a different game, but I, before I forget, and we never talked about Naheem Hines at all. Oh yeah, with Josh Allen, he's on the mildly interesting side on DK at least. Is he not or no? Not yet. I just we, think we, I, I'm fine waiting a week and just seeing think, how they use him. I, 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 and I think I think we want to see some, um, just some signs, not necessarily like oh man, you know he played. 
35 snaps. Just like getting some, some oh, that was interesting. Every, he was just out there for every third and long or whatever, right? Or in yeah. the no huddle. They, they get into the two minute and it's like, oh man, now Singletary's out, right? Because I think they wanted to do that with James Cook and just trying to do that with a rookie running back is difficult. I, I, I think that there's going to be Naheem Hines spots. Like if, like the Chiefs game. This can't be that, it, though, right? This, this, I'd rather play Carter. Same price, play Carter. So I don't think I you're going to play much Hines. But I, I wanted to make sure that I, I asked you guys because that was a curiosity I had. Uh, yeah, with this game, I, I just think that, uh, yeah, Josh Jacobs against the Jaguars, that's probably a good idea. And <laughs> it's, it's some, 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 you pick, pick your guy, pick Kirk, Engram, ETN. This is a great game to skinny stack. But I just, yeah, it, the, the 48 point total says you got a skinny stack it. You need exposure. Great. Let's do it. I just can't, I can't get all the way on board. I, I can't. Trevor Lawrence, these, these, this could, this is the ultimate fraud quarterback matchup. <laughs> that's my, that's my, pro, my problem. I think that's the problem that I have. I think this is a bad matchup for both these quarterbacks. I think they're going to underwhelm because they're not that good. And I think that, uh, somehow it, McDaniels is asking Carr to do things he's not comfortable doing for some reason. Uh, he just he looks uh, awful. Yeah. McDaniels not reading the room with Carter. I mean, with Carr, it's just, it's weird. Like, it's like, Hey man, maybe just try to figure out what worked. Someone figured out what worked for a few years there <laughs> with Carr. So why don't you go figure that out and come back to us and not just try to implement your system. <laughs> God, it makes uh, me crazy. My only counter is, um, so Travis Etienne, I believe is probably going to be the highest owned running back on the slate. And for good reason, I, he looks pretty good to me. I'd like to click that. I'd like to click that button as yeah, well. Etienne Raiders. That's a that's a matchup that makes sense. Again, we're we're playing running backs. There's a but stack I, right there. Running back stack. The, but the it's only very thing shocking. I will say, yeah, that that's is if I'm building a portfolio again, well, there's so many running backs we want to play. A Lawrence. I, I don't care if you play Lawrence just to Evan Ingram, like or play Lawrence to one of his wide receivers. Play Devonte. Bring bring Devonte back. Darren Waller is questionable again. He practiced in limit uh, practice on a limited wow. basis all week. So Foster the Moreau Allen of tight ends. Yes, Foster <laughs> Moreau may be a thing again at tight end. I think you can play some. I would probably only play Lawrence skinny stacks. Pray for the two rushing touchdown game like we got a few a few weeks ago. Man, but I Lawrence. do think like from a leverage op, from a leverage stance, oh. it's like if if forty percent of our opponents have Travis Etienne, and we play two percent owned Trevor Lawrence with you know whatever five percent owned Evan Ingram and three percent owned Devontae Adams, play whoever the hell you want <laughs> like or, around those guys. You know it it really doesn't matter. So I think I would sprinkle that into a one fifty set. Now, Eric, did you know that in that game where Trevor Lawrence rushed for two touchdowns, he did not hit twenty five PPR points? Yes, I, when we, we ignored that conveniently. <laughs> <laughs> I like mean, the Aaron Rodgers. Come like, on. Like I think Aaron he's Rodgers. like Kyle Pitts. He's the Kyle Pitts of quarterbacks. I'm <laughs> willing to let good. Lawrence beat me until I yeah. see it. Yeah. To be fair, I or to be clear, I prefer all these. I, I here's another one. Do you think we would have said uh, uh, a couple months ago like I much prefer Justin Fields <laughs> against the Dolphins oh, to uh, Trevor Lawrence against the Raiders? But I'm that's very how, happy for Justin Fields. That's how like, I feel. He, he. I mean, think about where he got drafted, the situation. Right, pace and ugh, it was just it was a terrible. I I you, I thought he was doomed. I thought they were gonna ruin him. Right, like oh look at these other guys. Oh Mac Jones gets to go to a, you know this 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 coach that has been visiting him at Alabama and having dinner with Saban. Oh, it's such a friendly situation. And oh Trey Lance gets to go. Uh, you know, learn at the feet of Shanahan. Shan no, shit. And like Justin feels like, hey, I'm going to Chicago. <laughs> you know, and that for, for him to come out of this as the best quarterback from this class, I love it. And I'm also totally here for Zach Wilson getting benched this week. <laughs> That's what we need. Justin Fields keep running. Zach Wilson gets benched to feed our uh, Tyler Conklin, and you build that Bills game stack around your naked Justin Fields with a Tyreek bring back or a Waddle bring back or whatever. Um, very interesting 
tournament construction this week. Before we get out of here, as always, if you've watched, we we land on a one final conviction play. We'll call it some other places call it flag plants or whatever. I don't want to steal their their mm. juju mm. conviction play that we discussed here today. That's the one thing you are most confident in for tournaments this week, Dario. I think you have to start with Aaron Jones. Like yes. that Lions run defense so bad. The only reason I'm like kind of making excuses for myself on why Mostert didn't hit last week because I think that he was in just an absolutely perfect spot. But that game script. I don't think anyone expected the Lions to play most of that game from ahead. And most are still pretty much delivered on yardage, just didn't find the end zone. And I think that in this spot, the Lions defense still hasn't stopped hardly anyone from the backfield. And we've seen that Aaron Jones is by far the best weapon in his offense. I think that he's my my go-to. And the Packers defense, not bad either. Love that, Matt. What do you got? Yes. Pay up and play your running backs. Pay up for running back. Play your running backs. You're you're going to run into a bunch of chalk guys. It's, it's fine. You know, you don't have to play all. We had the one lineup with all the chalkiest running backs. <laughs> all right. Maybe not that lineup, but pretty much you, I, I, this is going to be one of those lineups where we, this is a weird week. Do some weird uh, naked fields. Get weird there. Get weird with your running backs and flex. Just go get weird. But, uh, yeah, th- this may be the week where we invest the most in the running back position. And uh, it, there, there's a lot of great options. Just go have fun building building your running back skinny stacks this week. That's kind of com- uh, combining. This is, what, this is what tends to happen on the show. I take what you guys said, and then we're going to combine it into kind of a, a cumulative take. It's running back, definitely for me. I think <clears throat> we kind of outlined why not necessarily any one of these game stacks is like, you know, above all, uh, right, you know, rising above everything else, although we like a few a little bit more. I think the way to differentiate yourself is through the running back position. There are going to be some incredibly, uh, incredible projections from a point per dollar sense <clears throat> living in that from Dion Jackson to Joe Mixon range on yep. DraftKings. And they all look great. I don't really have much negative to say about anyone, but Deion Jackson, Dante Foreman, Ramondre, Mixon, ETN, et cetera. There's going to be like eight of them. They can't all be popular. And in then, even if they're not popular, nobody's going to go up and get Austin Eckler. That keeps Aaron Jones' ownership in check. That keeps right Josh Jacobs' ownership in check. All these guys end up being the leverage on the slate, and they're all great plays in their own right. You don't have to do, you know, I I, I like the like little Robbie Anderson type stuff, but that's like Millie shots or whatever. You're playing some single entry tournaments. You can play awesome teams with awesome running backs that are low owned and still stack a game or still play the. Fields Tyreek thing, or you know, you can play a, a freaking Seahawks game stack, which we spent 20 minutes walking through, and play Austin Eckler and play, you know, Joe Mixon, not Joe Mixon, and play uh, Josh Jacobs. Those guys that are just going to be a little bit lower owned, in my opinion, by Sunday than the Ramondres and and uh, ETNs of the world. So uh, normally it's like, a, hey, let's get fancy with a game that maybe other people aren't playing. I'm not sure that that's exactly mm-hmm. it. I think the running back position is a great way to do it this week. Mm-hmm. Do either of you guys have a candle nearby, perchance? Oh no! I think I think we need to say a prayer for the Bucks and the Rams, and the fact that this game, right preseason, Buccaneers Rams, we would have thought for sure oh this is a game we'd be talking about on a show like this, oh but we just God. went an hour and twenty minutes without mentioning <laughs> Cooper Cup, Mike Evans, Tom Brady, and I think it's just a just pour one out for for both of those teams. Was that the NFC Championship game last year or the N- NFC? It was divisional? a divisional. That was a hell of a game. It's Shoot a out. forty-two yeah. point total. <laughs> forty-two Rams Bucks forty-two total. <laughs> Absolutely insane. I I think uh, there are probably a couple pieces you could you could sprinkle into tournaments, oh, but stop it, Aaron. from uh, yes, you can a hundred percent. Of can. course you can. Right. Of course, of course. I mean, fifteen. Yeah, we Mike saw Evans Fournette. Get, 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 Fournette and, yeah. uh, found his way. It's a home game for Fournette, so he's going to find his way into some lineups. Yeah, um, but definitely not a, a crux of our of our game stack. So that will do it for us. Thanks for hanging out with us, as always. Uh, I, I also will throw out really quickly is please monitor the injury report. There, it is absolutely insane by this point in the season, and, and insane 
today and this week. Um, some of the things that you know we said today may change based on the injury report because there's lots and lots of questionable guys. So make sure to check that out. You can come back here uh, on Sunday mornings. We got shows. I'm on one of them, leading all the way up until lock. And of course, you can follow Matt and Dario to get all your lineup needs, including the lineup genius and so much more. But we will be back next week in week 10, hopefully printing some money with a naked Justin Fields and Austin Eckler lineup that we can come back in the, and celebrate. But uh, for us three and Steve behind on the ones and twos, we'll see you guys next week. 